Welcome to the show. I've got with me Kat Eltsroth from Figure Photography. How are you? Hey, doing well. How are you? I am I am doing very well. Very Good. well. It's a rare sunny day in Washington State, so that's, oh. uh, that's something new and different. You know? <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, before we get into like your business and that kind of stuff, let's... Uh, Let's let's get to know you a little bit. What's what's your background with photography? So, well, that's a good question. I uh, I went to music for or went to music. I went to school for music education. So you know that's highly qualifying. Um, <laughs> but uh, my my husband and I um, served in a high school ministry at our church for years and years and years, and uh, and we just loved photography. We always had cameras around the house, and um, we did mission trips with the kids and. And we just kind of started getting asked to shoot, you know, just bring cameras so the kids wouldn't bring theirs and lose them and their parents would get pissed off. Was really was really how it started. <laughs> we were like the camera monkeys. So, uh, and then that turned into, you know, our kids started getting a little older, getting to senior year, and um, we had some people ask us to come and shoot their proms, and it just kind of went from there. And um, we had no intention of starting a photography business whatsoever. Like we were way too involved, had too much stuff going on, trying to finish college, newly married. And uh, my sister-in-law's best friend uh, asked us if, if we would shoot her wedding. And I almost passed out on the floor. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Like, I, no, you, <laughs> you, you don't want us. Like, we don't know what we're doing. I've never done one before. The only wedding I'd ever been to was mine. So, like, I, I am the worst person. I'm the worst person to have to your wedding. So she basically said, you're hired. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like... Okay, great. <laughs> I had no idea what to charge. I think I charged like it was, <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I think I charged like five hundred dollars and in the contract I promised her like six hundred photos or something. Because <laughs> I literally that's how that's how much I knew about <laughs> having a photography business. So uh, that needless to say we learned a lot <laughs> at that first wedding. <laughs> Quite a lot. Um Especially about brides can be two hours late to their ceremony, oh. and cameras can break, and people get drunk, and you are way underpaid, and you can't possibly provide 600 photos and have them all be decent. It was it was a train wreck, like to <laughs> to say the least. It was, and I'm glad we can laugh about it now. And she loved it. Like, a oh God, she she thanks me all the time. Like I. And then I'm just embarrassed. I'm like, can I just do it over for you? Because, because <laughs> like, I'm embarrassed. Like, don't post those anywhere. They're terrible. It's crazy. But uh, but they were super super cool. Really great, really great couple. And uh, so yeah. So obviously we made some changes from there, and we just kind of decided like, okay, we'll just we'll do this on word of mouth for now. Like we're both we've got full time jobs. We're both teachers. Maybe on our summers off together we can put a couple in. We hadn't had kids yet, and. Um, so it just kind of, I mean, honestly, that's how it started was in a huge mess. <laughs> we just had to wade through it and figure it out the hard way. <laughs> I like the sales strategy that you've already given us right here. Like you get a call from a bride and you just tell them, I can't do this. I no. cannot do it. It's not <laughs> happening. It's, I can't do it. And they're like, you're hired. Yeah. Like, Complete opposite of everything we always hear about, you know, sales. Like, this is this is excellent. It works, guys. It works. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Please don't do that. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, I'm holding up the sarcasm sign right now. Yes. yes. Don't, oh don't, yes. Don't, don't do that. Oh man. So, oh, yeah. what? Uh, I gotta know. You know, every, every photographer likes to talk about gear. So what, uh, Canon, <laughs> Nikon, what, what is it? I, uh, I, I started in the Nikon camp, and then I defected. I did. I, uh, and it actually, it was purely out of guilt. Okay, so I, <laughs> it was. It totally was. It's such an embarrassing story because I still carry, like, I'm still embarrassed about it, and I still feel guilty about it, and it was, like, 10 years ago. So... I was the one who talked my husband into like maxing out our credit cards to get this Nikon D40 like forever ago. We bought all the lenses that came with it. I had mall security like walk me out to my car because I thought like everybody's going to know that I'm carrying a thousand dollars worth of gear and I'm going to get mugged. <laughs> so it was, it was it was 
was pretty bad. So we did, and uh, and I kid you not, a month later, I leave the whole kit on a plane, mm. and I, I. Can I still have not lived it down? My husband's been wonderful, but like I, I can't pick up a Nikon. I feel guilty. <laughs> like every, every single time I pick one up, it's just I'm a terrible person, and I'm still paying off those credit cards and some jack off. Cause I, he's got my gear and he didn't turn it back in. I'm so pissed. Oh, no. so, yeah. So I, I turned to Canon because there was no emotional repercussions of owning Canon gear. Yet I haven't broken or lost my Canon gear yet. Otherwise, I'll have to switch to like Sony or Leica or something. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. We, well, you're in good company because uh, I was I started in Nikon and now I'm shooting all Canon. So yeah. Um, and the guy I actually started, <laughs> I actually started. We started our photography business together, shooting weddings and stuff. Um, he has dropped every camera he's owned, like the D seven hundred with the seventy to two hundred two point eight. Oh. Totally hit the ground. Oh. Yeah, he's there with a tiny hammer and like a chisel, trying to like bend the housings back. Oh my it. gosh! Oh, yeah. that's horrible. Gets uh gets the five D Mark II. Uh, the lens happened to be loose. He picked it up by the lens. Body hit the. Body. Oh no. <laughs> No, that's terrible. So, yeah, so he may be switching to Sony or something here. You know, you never know. I did. I did have a friend of mine who uh, she shoots Canon. For, she's in Polly's Island, South Carolina. Her and her husband they shoot together, but she's mostly the photog- like the main shooter. So he's he's second, and, uh, and he's he's at the formal family portraits doing like the candid stuff. And little grandma turns to him and she goes, "Do you know how to use that thing?" And he goes, he goes, yeah, and he pulls it up to his face, but he had just switched lenses, and he hadn't fully, like, connected the two, and the lens falls straight off and hits the ground right after he assured little grandma that, yes, he knew what he was doing. Like, that is, that is one of my favorite photographer (laughs) stories ever. Yeah. Oh, man. (laughs) Oh, oh so, when we try to be cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is kind of something I've I, I've never dropped my camera, you know, knock knock on wood. But when I first got my 7D, I had everything, you know, you get your neck strap, everything, you put it on, you you know, you can hang it around your neck like a little tourist. Then. Oh yeah. Um, I picked the camera up one time, and that's what caught and almost pulled the camera out of my hand. And I oh, immediately man. took the neck strap off at that point and got really? the hand grip. So yep. that, that won't happen again. Yep. Oh, yeah. You get one good scare, and that's <laughs> that's yeah. all you need. <laughs> so, a little pro tip right there. Yeah, your, yeah. your neck strap's not always a good idea. So. <laughs> oh, so you started off just kind of doing word of mouth. Did it kind of blow up from there did it go for I mean let's let's talk about that a little bit yeah it did um we we ended up getting about um ten thousand dollars worth of weddings in our first month which was like absolutely crazy we were not prepared for that we weren't looking for that like it just it just happened that we were in a a network that had a lot of young couples and they were kind of getting to that point and it just you know got around that people liked what we were doing and yeah, and that's kind of how it how it started. So from there, we um, again we were still this was, it was a part time thing. It was always intended to be a part time. Never had intentions to go um, full time with photography, but um, we did do a couple of ads. I was terrible at those. I was really really bad, and I was taking out cheap ads where that nobody was looking at them. I'm like, oh hey, but I've got an ad online. When that site has like a hundred visitors in six months, <laughs> but I'm I'm a pro. I'm a pro, guys. I have an ad online, yes. so made lots of mistakes. I don't know how many business cards I stapled to like Food Lion, <laughs> like little bulletin boards, <laughs> and they were just thrown in the trash and whatever. So. Yeah, so I I got really good at at word of mouth and referrals and um and kind of growing it that, that way for to keep it part time was that was the best for us. So, yeah. I see. Okay, so let's talk about 
maybe some hurdles or struggles with with the business. You got you had any uh, any bumps in the road that you can share with us? <laughs> Do I have anything that's not a bump to share? <laughs> and I want to I want to clarify too that was weddings, right? You didn't go from a five hundred dollar wedding to a ten thousand dollar wedding. Oh no 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 oh no oh God, no. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I've got one wedding under my belt. I am worth ten grand now. <laughs> that would be amazing. I kid, of no. course, but I, I had to just, I had to point that out there. So. No, I appreciate that because I'm sure I've got somebody who will come to my fan page and be like, "What the hell? You said <laughs> you charge five hundred for your first and ten thousand for your second. No, that is, no, it was multiple weddings. <laughs> all using the strategy of saying I can't. No, do this. I'm terrible. Don't, <laughs> don't hire me. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, well, honestly, I think the first big hurdle was gear. Like we, we didn't have any money. I, you know, all right, great. So I had five hundred dollars from that first wedding I did. Like, what's that going to buy you? Not a whole lot. So, um, we had to get really good at, you know finding things like lens rentals or just networking with our photographers, you know, in just in our own network, asking to borrow gear and um, just finding people, kind of people at peace that way. And, you know, and we did. So we were able to do that um, and kind of get those bases covered. And we really didn't have to buy um, two two sets of anything ever. Like even, oh, I guess now we, we each have a camera. But like I don't, I don't own my second body. I'll either rent that or borrow it from friends and, um, you know, and just make it work. Like I just, I don't need the extra stuff in my life, and I'm not shooting weddings every weekend. So like, there's no reason to go out and get in debt for, you know, for once in a while. So, yeah. So that was definitely a big hurdle. Timing was another one. You know, people have weddings and the dates set. You know, you gotta, you gotta be available, and you got it's an all day thing. So when you're teaching all day, with at least for me, my husband's a middle school teacher, so they kind of sit still a little better. I was elementary school, so I've got little rugrats like cat, 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 like all day, <laughs> all day. <laughs> like, it's it's exhausting, and then to go into a whole day on a Saturday, and uh, you know, and doing weddings. And I was doing weddings until I mean, I was nine. The last wedding I did, not the last wedding, but one of the, one of my last weddings I did, I was nine week or nine months pregnant. What? Like I was prego. I, I there was no. No hiding the condition, like so. And even <laughs> that is dedication. Right there. I was, I had, I had guests offering to take the photos for me <laughs> <laughs> because of how pregnant I was. And like, I mean, I was, you know, like the adrenaline kicks in and you're having a great time. Like, you know, I'm squatting down, like taking pictures in the aisle and whatever. And I'd have, I'd have like grandpa put his hand out to like help me back up because I couldn't stand up on my own. Yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. That was for sure. So, <laughs> so uh, actually, and that was another time that we, we learned the hard way, but then was able to figure out a solution. Bringing along another shooter was wonderful because then I got to sit out the whole reception and he jumped in, you know, being nine months pregnant. Like, I had, and oh, because, oh, and this is why I ended up doing it pregnant. I totally forgot about this. I took the wedding before we found out we were even pregnant. So I agreed to it and then I'm like, holy crap, I am, I'm either A, going to be in the hospital having my baby <laughs> when your wedding is happening or I'm going to be super pregnant. So... So I told her that, and she decided to stick with us anyway. And it was a lot of fun. We had we had a great time. It was a lot of learning, learning as you go, and just being flexible. Like I think that's the biggest that's the biggest lesson that I had to learn as like from the photographer side is just being flexible. You gotta you can't have a set schedule in anything, even with like just a family portrait shoot. Because you know what, some teenager is gonna be grumpy and they're gonna give you ugly faces all day long, and there's nothing you can do about that. Or, you know, like the, the wedding, like things are not going to go right and somebody's going to be missing or bride's freaking out about something and like you just got to, you just got to stay calm and, you know, and just, and just go with it. It's your job to tell the story and things that don't go wrong are part of the story too. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you just reminded me of something too, that the grumpy teenager, I just did a shoot last weekend and uh, um, the one kid looked super mad the whole time and I'm like, hey, come on, bud. Smile at yep. me. Well, when he smiled, he had braces. Oh, and yeah. So I kind of felt like I singled him out. And then, 
you know, the reality was he didn't want to. Well, his brother got me back because uh, I was doing just the mom and grandma. I turn around and the kid was literally mooning me. Like, I was, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, I, I think I paid extra for that one. So. That's amazing. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta love that. So, oh. so now I think I think it's probably a good time we can kind of transition into into your website and kind of yeah. what 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 that's all about. Like, um, just give us the rundown on on five figure photography. That's the name, correct? Yeah, that, yep. right? yeah, yeah. So, um, so five figure photography started, um basically out of necessity. So I had um, some medical issues after the birth of my son and had to put photography on hold. Um, I just couldn't be on my feet. So so for about two years I uh, I just dug into five-figure photography and developing different types of training, different things that I had learned and pe things that people had taught me um, and just put it out there to help other photographers. I loved photography and I hated being stuck at home and, and not being out there with my camera and, and meeting people. So five-figure seemed like the best way to kind of make the, the most of the situation, I guess. So I still got to be a part of a community and be involved in photography and, and like the... The part that I love about photography in general is just the people. Like I love being in the midst of all of the chaos and everybody talking and you know and just listening and hearing stories and and helping and and uh, and Five Figure really does that and and kind of leans into my what I loved about teaching. So I loved being able to um, kind of put put my knowledge and things that I've learned into words that are like easy to, to digest for my kids, right? Um, that's the whole point of teaching is to actually communicate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a it's a good skill to have. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I was like, you know what? I think I can do this for photographers. I think that while I'm sitting here on my butt, like can't actually get out there with my camera, like I can at least put down on paper or in a video or you know, or emails or whatever, what, what I've learned and, and if it helps somebody, awesome. So it uh it took off about I mean honestly about six months ago, but it's been growing for the last two years and um yeah, so it's it's really fun. Like that's definitely our, our new focus for now. So it's very cool. And so it's kind of funny that we're even sitting here talking. Cause I I found I found out about I saw your 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 website and stuff. I mean, shortly after I started Photography Tips HQ, and uh, I remember seeing like your like a video on Facebook or whatever, and and then trying to find a way to contact you. And I, I it was early in the morning. I probably could have looked harder than I did, <laughs> but I remember thinking, well, I don't see a contact on the this this page that I was that I was on, and so I uh, uh, I eventually just kind of ah, oh well, I'll I'll maybe I'll find her later, and then. I remember sitting in one of your webinars and um, hearing you talk about using Google Places to get your website, like your 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 uh, your photography business, on the first page of Google when people search for, you know, in my case, Mount Vernon photographer. Yeah. And, uh, yep. Um, well, that shoot that I just talked about where I got mooned, <laughs> that, <laughs> that came about from somebody just doing a Google search. And picked my name out of the list of photographers that showed up for for Mount Vernon photographer. So, oh, that's awesome! I, you know, I got to give you props. Uh, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a great tool. Yeah, and how long did it take you? Oh, to set that up. I mean, yeah. probably five minutes. And the great thing yeah. is, I've actually used it. My dad has a cabinet shop. I went in and did it with his. So his. Cool. He shows up on the first page of Google, and uh, that's awesome. You know, and I've actually used it like. I go to like a local pub or something, and I'm like, "Hey, let me do some social media stuff for you guys." Well, you know, I don't, and I'm like, "Are you showing up on Google?" Well, we're not sure. Are you in this area? Are you in Google Places? Did you fill that out? Uh, no. Okay, go do that. Yep. And here's your, here's your free one. After that, call me. You know, like. Yep. Yeah, and definitely. So, it's a, it's a very very simple. Uh, easy thing to set up and uh, oh, good. I, I say thanks. Yeah, Thank you. you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad it worked out. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so let's let's get let's dig a little deeper into into five figure. What's it What's it about? What's the What's the focus? So the focus is um, basically helping photographers with the the business side of running a photography business. So I don't do the you know 
like post processing tips or you know shooting techniques like I don't there are plenty of other people that have way more experience in that than me my uh, my buddy Josh uh, Dunlop is at expertphotography.com like he's a great resource I, there it's just countless like there are plenty plenty I'll just say plenty again there's there are plenty <laughs> Wait, how many was that plenty just okay plenty yes. that's our word of the day it's like Pee-wee's Playhouse so we're gonna go yes. nuts every time yes. we hear that word, so. <laughs> I'm like I'm waiting for like the chair over here to just go over and start eating yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, I, my favorite is that Morpheus from the Matrix was still, he got his start in that show. Yes. What kind of? Anyway. Yes. Talk about rabbit trail. All right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Back to, uh... So yeah, so I basically um, so I, I've got tons of different things. So basically, where wherever wherever you are as a photography business owner, brand new somebody who's struggling, someone who's trying to get back in the game, whatever. I'm I'm just offering anything I can possibly think of and there's tons of free content we do like those the the Google Place webinar that was totally free. Um, I really try to give out, you know, tons and tons of information that that is just going to help photography business owners get better at growing their business cuz usually they start out cuz it's they're artists, like it's an art form, it's something that they really enjoy doing. You don't just say, you know what, there's a crap ton of money in photography and I'm just going to go pick up a camera and I'm going to do it. Like, you have, similar to being a teacher, you kind of have to enjoy it because it's really hard. <laughs> it's not always fun. It's not the prettiest <laughs> career to be in. So, uh, so yeah, so I really cover um, anything from like Facebook advertising specifically geared towards photographers like there are plenty of people who offer trainings on um, Facebook ads and you know different social media advertising stuff um, but I having come from the photography background and having owned my own photography business I kind of have a better grasp on like what's worth your time and what's really not so um, so you know but again like I try to make it really really clear that I'm just offering what has worked for me and I give you tools for you to you know kinda tweak to make work in your business so whereas like my say like the photography economy in DC where I am could be totally different from like Boise Idaho so I'll do I'll go and do research and I will give you what you need to get started and then I'm here to help along the way if that makes sense so um, so I've got trainings on like how to set up referral programs I've got one that's um, 140 personal photography projects to strengthen your skills if you want and I collaborated with a couple of other um, people on that one and um, and just uh, similar to what you do like reaching out to people that are way better than I am and you know and just letting letting them talk just picking their brain what have you learned and you know what 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 more training can we offer to you know to any photographers in the five-figure community so yeah so we've got a pretty big fan page there's like I don't know how many fans are up to. It's like forty-eight thousand or something, and um, and we've got like sixteen thousand people on an email list that I email out free stuff to all the time, and um, yeah, so it's a really it's a really cool community. I really I'm really lucky to be a part of it. It's really fun. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll make sure to get all the links from you. That we can put in the show notes so that yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, you know, hopefully get some more people connected there. That'd be that'd be awesome. Yeah. So. You said you kind of got some uh, like expertise in Facebook ads. Is there any any tips that you could even share with us right now that are just kind of oh you know, yeah off the cuff? Okay, so hands down, if you are a wedding photographer, you have you have to get into Facebook advertising. I don't care how difficult you think it is. It seems overwhelming. You don't have a lot of money. Those are excuses. Get over it. Go open up Facebook advertising and just look at it. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down, if anybody happens to be opening it right now, scroll down and go into the targeted, the audience targeting. And you can actually choose to have your ad shown to any Facebook profile based on their relationship status. So you can actually click to only have your ad shown to people who are engaged. Like imagine the power of that as a wedding photographer being able to guaranteeing that your ad is only going to be seen by engaged couples as opposed to putting it in your local newspaper where like let's be honest you know 58 and overs are probably reading it they're not chances are they're not getting engaged I, I, maybe that's offending somebody, but sorry. So you're going to spend two thousand dollars to put a new, you know an ad in your newspaper where you have no idea who's looking at it. 
you have no idea. You're just you're hoping. It's called hope marketing, or that's what Frank Kern calls it. So hope marketing, as opposed to put five dollars in a Facebook ads and have your ads shown to people who are just engaged. Now you know that five dollars is it is going to be spent on people who are actually potential customers. That it, that made the biggest difference in my business when they when they added that I was like thank you Facebook gods like you have changed my life I I bow to you you are wonderful thank you very much and I can't believe more photographers don't do it I don't see I fit into that demographic like as far as the age group or whatever not that I'm marked as engaged but I don't see photographers show up in my Facebook profile ever ever. And it's so it's so easy and self-explanatory. Like you just you you got it. You have to do it. You have to do it. It it's really funny that you say the 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 relationship status because I looked at that every time I've run ads and I'm like that is the most useless thing for me to target for for what you know for what it is that I'm that sure. I was you know using for uh. uh that I was running ads for. Yeah. But hearing you say that, I'm like, oh my gosh, why haven't I thought of that for running ads for for weddings? Like it didn't yep. even cross my mind. I was just yep. like, this seems intrusive. Why do we need to know this? Facebook. Oh, it's super creepy. <laughs> it's super. It's super creepy. It's Big Brother. <laughs> creepy, weird. This is why everybody you know hates Facebook. But you know what? There's still five billion users. Plenty of people on there getting engaged, and that's like a rite of passage to mark your account as engaged. Mm -hmm. So why would you not run ads to that? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything. You know, well it does. You gotta get, you gotta pay them something. But you can have a really small budget, five bucks. Click, you know, only show to people who are engaged in my area. Done. You yeah. can have a wedding in the next like 45 minutes. Like that's totally worth it. No, that's you're absolutely right. That is a that is a great tip, and it's really not that hard to navigate through those ads. No. I think I even have a. If you guys go to my YouTube channel, I even have a like a quick run through on how to run an ad on Facebook. So awesome. It's not it's not a it's not a hard thing. No, it's definitely so, not. Um, yeah, that's great. Well, thank you very much for that. Yeah. So. This is a little bit of a tough question, but what what's been? I have the word failure in my list. What's been the biggest failure? But I want to reword that to okay. what has been the best learning experience, right? Because failure huh. is only failure if you stop. That right? yeah, yep. Just yeah. because something doesn't go right, it doesn't mean that it's a failure. It means that yep. it's a learning experience, and you can yes. learn from that. So yes. What has been a learning experience that you can share with us? <laughs> I have one from like last week. <laughs> it's, it's very recent. So uh, basically I, I, I wrote a new product and uh, I won't say which one because I'm running ads and stuff to a few of them. But one of them I was extremely proud of. I put so much time into this, it, and this is all five figure, right? So this is not related to like my actual like photog wedding photography stuff. Sure. And uh, and I honestly like I kind of did the hope marketing. Like I thought I had a great idea, and I was like, who's not gonna love this? Who's not gonna want to like to hire me to do this or whatever? And uh, <laughs> and and. Damn it, if nobody bought that thing <laughs> at all. Oh I went a whole week where not a single not not a single person bought. And I what I just felt so defeated. I was you know, I was, and that happens all the time. Anybody who has a business, if you have a bad week, month, year, you're like, this is worthless and I should just stop now and just, you know, just give up. Who cares? And then uh, and then my brothers, um, so I don't know if I mentioned this. My brother Brian and Scotty run get10,000fans.com. So they are they're doing what I'm doing with Five Figure, but on a much larger scale. They've got like 13 employees or something now. So they're wow. They're do, yeah, they're doing great. Um, I'm not there yet. This this is this is a party of one right here. Is <laughs> 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 is just me. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So basically, instead of 
well, not instead of, because I did sulk on my couch for like two days. I was like, this is horrible. I just need to sell all this or just let it drift off into internet black hole and never go back. And uh, so I went and I sat down with my brothers. And of course, like I'm being the emotional girl and I'm like crying. I'm like, this sucks. Nobody likes me. Everybody thinks I'm a fraud. Nobody wants, like, I can't help anybody. This is terrible. And they're like, Kat, <laughs> shut up <laughs> like like why why are you doing five figure they straight up asked me that and I was like because I want to help people <laughs> it was terrible it was so embarrassing it's and we're like in this glass conference room and like everybody can see me <laughs> like I'm, it was it was awkward so <laughs> to see the least and uh, so what Brian did is he had me go back and pull all of my numbers like for the last two years so all of the customers that I've you know like helped and all the money we've made and the money we spent in advertising and kind of going back to that 30,000 foot view not just looking at like how bad this last week was um, and and when I ran those numbers and I was able to see like oh my gosh like just in the last 50 days I've been able to help over 200 different businesses like do something either figure out or they have now have a tool to practice their skills or you know whatever any number of things and like and that just totally changed it for me like remembering what I've done and really forgetting like what's not working or or is working in the moment and just like shooting for that goal so realizing like I have already reached my goal of helping like that's what I that's what I want to do I want to help photographers that's why I was a teacher I wanted to help kids I love I love helping people get to the next step so when I was teaching that was like for little kids but you know now I'm not I really appreciate adult conversation <laughs> it's, it's it's wonderful <laughs> and uh, and yeah so that that really that was a huge huge help for me and even in the photography side of things I, I helped mentor a couple of guys um, and even just this past week I, I had one guy call me and he was like cat like this is terrible I just spent whatever he was trying to run ads and he wasn't getting any sales nobody was hiring him and I was like okay Jonah uh, it was ex I, I can't really take credit because Brian's the one who sat me down and told me the same thing I just like spit it out all over again like run your numbers like look at how many people you have helped already like you have already proven that you are a worthy photographer somebody somebody wants to hire you and they praised you afterwards doesn't mean you're perfect doesn't mean there's nothing you can't do better and Lord knows I've spent the last week trying to fix everything that went wrong in that <laughs> that last product launch you know and um, but yeah I think that was I think that's the that's been the biggest thing for me to, to overcome but has been like a greatest blessing for me too is really realizing like to not get stuck in like don't get stuck in the mud because you had to walk through like a beautiful field to get to the mud and there's something on the other side too so yeah. So the first question I have when you realize that there were no sales coming in is what <laughs> wines do you recommend? For <laughs> so we have a lovely local winery called, uh, what is it called? Linden, Lindenwood? Yeah, I think it's Lindenwood. Um, or or I, I turned a dogfish head. Anybody across the country? <gasps> oh my gosh! Head. It's 30 minutes from me and oh. I have had plenty of 120s this last week to oh calm my, my nerves. Gosh. I, <laughs> we this just went to a whole new level. Hey, that's you got to come out, man. It's in Delaware. Let's go. Uh, I I'm not kidding you. One yep. of the pastors in my church, we this will be our third year in a row that we collect dogfish that it's hard to get out here. Oh, like, I bet. Yeah. We collect it throughout the entire year. I probably have I think I have 16 bottles, including 120 minute, because it's about. Yep. It's, I think it's like $12 a bottle out here, maybe 15. Yep. It's oh yeah. Super hard to get, and we do food pairing, and so. Oh, that's we, awesome. We get together. We make sure there's no kids. They stay the night. Yep. You know, it's not like we get wasted. We don't. We you know we spread it out over many hours. But sure. We have a great time with Dogfish Head. So oh, it's amazing. There it's, we go. There's our plug for. Uh... Hey, Dogfish Head, <laughs> check it out. There's, there's. So they just opened a restaurant like maybe 30 minutes south of us, 
and uh, and I had no idea, but my friend follows their Facebook page, and they tapped a they tapped a whole keg of 120, and it was like a two drink maximum. And oh, yeah. <laughs> And we were in their restaurant like 20 minutes after they posted to their Facebook page. We're like, babysitters, get in the car right now. We are going in rush hour traffic. Let's go. Yes. That was the best. Yeah. Oh, my wife's probably going to find you on Facebook now. You're probably going to have a new best friend. I'm nice. Just so. Nice. Send me your address. I'll send you some 120. <laughs> it's cheaper out here. <laughs> that will be happening. I will. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, so we still got a few more things to talk about before we wrap up here. And we're doing yeah. okay on time, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. So one of the things I want to ask, um, I want to finish up the few questions here, and then I want to talk about some stuff you've got coming up. Yeah. All right. So what is one of the best resources that you could recommend for anybody in photography business? Oh my gosh, one of the best. Uh, besides resources. five figure photography. Besides, like, I wasn't even going to say five figure. I wasn't. I, I know you that. weren't. I'm saying that. Like, uh, that yeah, it yeah. is an excellent resource, but, yeah. you know, something for you that you'd recommend that's, that's helped oh you. Oh my goodness. Way. It can just I mean, be business related. It doesn't have to be photography business related. Yeah. It's just a business resource. I mean, honestly, the, the first thing that came to mind was lensrentals.com. That that has been a a lifesaver. They are so easy to work with. They have all the best gear you can possibly think of. They don't you don't have to put down the full value as a deposit, which was a really that was a really big thing for us. Again, like we we're okay school teachers. It's wide known fact we don't make a lot of money. <laughs> so so we had to rent our gear, and it was it was just awesome. So no hassle, totally great. And we got to try new stuff. It was a great way to try new gear before we bought it. So that that has been absolutely amazing. Um, I what was another one? Uh, Rocket Lawyer has been really good, like for getting drafts of contracts and stuff. Um, we've really liked them a lot. Um, yeah, and then honestly, just not being scared to reach out to photographers in your area. I mean, that was that was a big thing. Like I. I was really lucky that the the girls that did my wedding um, had been doing photography full time for years and years and years. Really well known. The the three blondes and a camera is their website. So if you check them out, and it's really funny because it's really two blondes and a brunette. <laughs> but, but they are they are just the coolest gals ever, and they travel. FYI, here's a little plug for my girls. Hey hey. So uh, so they they have just been an amazing resource for me. I see them all the time and you know they just ask me how business is going. They invite me on shoots all the time and just just having somebody who's an open resource for you that you can just ask questions like, hey, how how many shots should I promise? Because for my first wedding, I promised six hundred because I didn't know what I was doing. And had I had somebody to ask at that point, it would have saved me hours, hours and hours of crying over my editing. <laughs> so, yeah. So just you know, just don't be afraid. Like, just send them an email and just ask them. Like, hey, I, I would love to just pick your brain. Let me take you out for coffee, ask you a couple questions, and just. You know, just let them talk. Okay. Awesome. So this is kind of a fun question. Okay. And it is, uh, what advice would you give 18-year-old Kat if she walked up and said, I <laughs> want to start a photography business? Huh. That's a good question. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> my initial responses were, wait another year to get married or go live in a dorm, don't live at home. <laughs> it's just other, <laughs> other things. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> to do some research beforehand. Like, don't, don't just assume that you've got this amazing skill and as soon as you open up shop, like, your inbox is going to get flooded with strangers that are begging you to shoot their weddings for thousands of dollars. <laughs> like, that's really fun and that's really great to, like, to dream that way and, you know, and everybody does need to get excited about, you know, you know about the possibility of your business. But, you know, just remember that on, aside from being an artist, you have to also be a business owner and you got to make business decisions. 
not just artistic ones. So I think that was that that could have saved me a lot, a lot of time and a lot of frustration with, I honestly a lot of stuff with how I priced my stuff, um, uh, like general customer acquisition, like being frustrated, like you know why why don't you want to pay me this much or why why are you asking for oh gosh this was the worst why why won't you just give me all the files and let me edit them and then I'll just pay you fifty bucks like. <laughs> You know, I hadn't even thought about stuff like that. So I'm literally in the middle of a contract meeting like, oh, wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. but had I asked somebody else or just done a little bit of research, you know, on like things that I should have prepared ahead of time, it could save me a lot of awkward <laughs> conversations. <laughs> I've had a lot of awkward moments in my photography career. <laughs> it was, this just touches the surface. So, if anybody, right. wants, if anybody wants some advice on that, just hit me up. <laughs> I'd be happy to tell you all the things not to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's uh, let's get into what you have coming up because you got something pretty exciting coming up. Yeah. So, kind of. Uh, you know, I uh, I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. I straight up have had a photographer crush on Jasmine Starr for the, like, the last five years. Like, she is totally my photographer crush. Love her so much. I read everything that she ever puts out. I'm like, can I please be you? You are wonderful. And I was like, all right, fine. Like, I'm done stalking her, <laughs> her site. I'm actually going to, like, reach out to her. So I uh, I did. I just I sent her an email, and I was like, hey, I've been a photographer for a little while, and now I've got this community, this five-figure photography thing going on, and and uh, and I would really love if you would do a webinar with me. And uh, and she wrote back and was so sweet, like she just said yes right off the bat, like no questions asked. Just she was so excited to to meet me. We've actually met on Skype a couple times now, and. Um, yeah, so she's she's agreed to kind of be a, a total open book. Like, she's amazing at marketing. She is so, so good and could talk for hours about it. So we're, we're going to have a, a photography business webinar um, on the 21st, November 21st at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I've got a registration link for that. And, and we're just, we're just going to sit down together like we were having a cup of coffee and we're just going to talk. talk and we're just, she, we're going to field questions. Like, it's all, it's 100% live. This is not recorded. Like, we're going to take live questions, and people are already submitting them, you know, to my email address. Like, I, th I think I've got 100 questions already, like, set to go, and it's everything from how do I find new customers to um, what, you know, what kind of gear should I have, what, how should I price my stuff, like, just anything you can possibly think of. And, uh, and Jasmine and I are talking about them all the time. We're seeing every question that's coming in, and, and we're, we're building the whole webinar over the next two weeks based on all the feedback we get. So it's, it's literally like for the people by the people basically <laughs> so it's it's gonna be really fun I, I, I would lie if I didn't uh, like I was totally starstruck <laughs> I don't go and find my vine but I do have like four or five vines of me just like staring at the camera like she knows my name oh my gosh she knows my she said what like in incomplete sentences total fangirl it was <laughs> so embarrassing but I just I had I had I had to record it. I was so excited. So it's a really really cool, really cool next step for for five figure and and she's just she's a great just a great person. So genuine and uh, and I'm I'm just stoked. I'm stoked with, for what we're gonna learn with her. So yeah. So coming up. Okay. Tell me the give us the date one more time. So it's November twenty first, Friday, November twenty first at five p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, November twenty first, and then yeah. there's is there a cost? I can't remember. No, it's totally free, hundred percent free. Uh, I'll give you the registration link, and we can paste it in the notes, and um, and you can send me questions now. Like if you've got questions and you want to put them on the docket, you email them to me, and they they are on the list. And then when you come, you can ask more questions live right there in the chat box. And as we're as Jasmine and I are talking, we'll we'll field those and answer those and. But it's it's a hundred percent free, so you get to come and listen from an amazing, amazing uh, like her packages start at like something crazy, like six or eight thousand dollars. Like she knows what she's doing. She's from Southern California. 
She does photo photography all day long. I think she was a lawyer. She started out as a lawyer and was like, you know what? This is not like hitting my gifts. Like if I could, and her husband was like, if you could do one thing forever, what would it be? And she, similar to my like crying before, like she was like, I just want to be a photographer and did it. And she's been doing it full time ever since. Like she knows her stuff. So I think she's gonna have just some invaluable information for for anybody who's you know wants to wants to do this thing. So very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I think I first heard about her. I think the guy's name is Dane Sanders. He's got like the fast track photography business. Oh and, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and he talks about he talks a lot about about her and her story. And yeah. Uh, so, well, very cool. Yeah. That's, that's very cool. I will make sure to uh, spread the word as much as possible. And yeah, uh, I tell you what. Let's. Uh, I'm going to make it really easy for people to uh, find that registration if they go to uh, photographytipshq.com/cat. That's K-A-T. You will be able to find that uh, registration to that webinar. Cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. More the merrier. Come on. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well, I want to just say thanks for uh, for reaching out. Yeah, definitely. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, you know, maybe we'll have you back in the future, and you can let us know how that webinar went, and just kind of get a, you know, just find out how things are going and stuff. So. Yeah, definitely. I'd love that. All right. Well, very good. Well, uh, again, that's. Uh, I just want to make sure if you guys want to check out that webinar, go to photographytipshq.com/slash-k, and uh, you'll be able to register there. And uh, with that, Kat, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, and, you too. Uh, Thanks for having me. All right. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Sounds good. All right.